is Thailand against South Africa. And we were just talking about Judd Trump at the US Open and what an impact he made in terms of interest. Well, of course, his first defeat was against Judd Trump, but he was eliminated in that double elimination tournament by a player involved here this morning, Jason Theron, who beat Trump 11-10. First rock, Thailand to break. So the ties won the lag. Off they go. I think they will struggle with the break off. It's all a matter of knowledge, and already they're smiling at their own inabilities, Joe Perry. Morning, Phil. Morning, everybody. Yeah, I think that's the uh, the real big difference with Paul and Snooker is the, the specialised pull shots. You know the the break off, the, the jumping of the ball, the getting out of snookers, that's where they're really going to struggle. And as straight away, you can see not enough power in that break off. Yeah, and I just feel like this match is going to be all about this fellow at the table. If he can hold himself together, you would think they are favourite in this match because they're on. Start the clock, please. He's a pretty tidy player. It's not working. Well, the early sign wasn't good there. Kyle Akalu, his right arm was shaking visibly. And that was an elementary shot. He's from Malvern, not in Worcestershire in England, but from near Durban. Let's see if Akalu shakes on this one. Yeah, so the man at the table is Kyle Akalu for South Africa. Oh, he is shaking, definitely. Some pool players over the years just naturally do shake. I'm not sure if any snooker players shake like that, do they, Joe? Well, sometimes you get a good vision of John Higgins, who's one of the greatest snooker players ever. Sometimes you look at his back arm and his shirt, it looks like it's quivering quite a bit. I don't yeah. always think it's the air conditioning. I think sometimes he's a little bit nervy. Yeah, I think... Mark Selby, you can see him shake sometimes, and of course, way back when, the 1990 yeah. British Open champion, French-Canadian Bob Chaperon, didn't stop him winning a, a big world ranking title. It'd be interesting to see if South Africa run these balls, which they should do where, where they're laying. What side of the table the break from, because JJ seems to think the side where South Africa are sat, the table's breaking better. And of course, Thailand, they've not really been here all week and they probably don't know to look for things like that. Straight. I actually played Jason in China, in the Chinese eight ball. And uh, yeah. he, he did beat me. He had far too much knowledge for me in that game. And uh, yeah. one thing I was really impressed was his break. I, I just couldn't believe how hard he could actually hit the balls. And it was, interesting to see like how he does here like you say well he's a big fella so he's packing a punch isn't he look at that cue shaking yeah that's incredible you're right wow. i watched him play a few racks at the <coughs> uk open on the outside tables and that wasn't evident it's just purely and simply this alien environment he finds himself in in front of the tv cameras in front of a worldwide audience well, Jason needs to get in good on this nine, and he hasn't. He's way short. Like he's going to be thinner. Is there something on the that TV camera tells you? So I don't fancy him for this one. I just don't. Not with that shake. But if he does pot it, that's going to settle him down. Yep, you could see the back arm shake. You just never fancied it. It's it important for Jason to get better on the nine. Tep Chai is not messing around. Well, he's known in snooker for sometimes missing a very expensive final ball. On more than one occasion, he's made a 140 and missed the final black for a 147. Oh, At the third oh, time of asking, the nine ball enters the pocket, and it's the experienced Jason Theron who tidies things up. 
South Africa were given a scare there. Kyle Akalu, you can see there's tension in that Q arm, but it's not prevented. South Africa drawing first blood. So this was the first nine ball missed. And we sort of never fancied that, did we? Just talking about the shake. That was a red, 10 feet long. You'd have probably slotted it in the middle of the pocket, but just the sheer size of the ball. And he's using a pull cue as well, so he's not going to have a clue about the throw and how the pull cue feels. So this is what can happen. You'd have potted that nine, wouldn't you, Joe? I'd like to think so, Carl, yeah. Joe, don't be fooled. He's being very kind at the moment, but there will come a point where he turns on you. Do we not have to South Africa lost in the first round last year, 7-5 to Great Britain C. Darren Appleton and Carl Boys. But it was a different pairing then, Richard Halliday and JJ Fall. He's going to shout out 10 seconds. Sorry? He's going to shout out 10 seconds because it's still not working. Now, one of the reasons that Desislava yeah? Boshilova is speaking to the players to is that right now there's a shot clock malfunction. So I think... The second marker is going to shout South out the, break, one the descending now. seconds to the players to keep them informed and make sure there's no time foul infractions. He's lost the cue ball on the break. We're always trying to get the white in the center of the table. On the bottom now. But at least he's got a pot at the one, but I don't think the two passes the green six, so there's a few problems here. Ignore that one. I've got to ask Ignore you this, Joe. Do you fancy having a go at this game? Yeah, I wouldn't mind at some point having a little go, but I think I'd, I'd have to put a, quite a bit of practice in first, you know, just, just to get used to the size of the balls and the, the way they react and the cushions and such. But, yeah, it's a fun game, isn't it? You know, it's great to play, and what a shot he's played there. Good effort. make up a bit of a, a C or a D team, couldn't we, Joe? I was thinking more sort of J or K, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that was a good effort. It was never going to be easy getting on the blue two. And now he's going to have to play a safety shot. wonder if he can just run that two in between the pink four and the green six and just get it up towards the top of the table and just rest the cue ball on the bottom rail. Don't worry, by the way, as I said, there's a, a shot clock malfunction, so there was no oh, time extension. foul there. Excellent. Extension code. He's going to notify you only in 10 seconds. Yes. That shot does look on. Well, that, that is some shake he's got going on there on the back. Yeah, that's going to be good enough, isn't it? Not the first time we've seen it in the World Cup. I remember in Shanghai a few years ago, one of the South Korean players fell victim to the same thing, just overcome by nerves. He's got to jump over two balls here, I think. He's had a go. Okay, he needs the cue ball to keep running. He needs it to sit on top of the two. Look at that, he got some height on that, didn't he? Can he pot the two? Oh no, he can't, so that's not ended up too bad at all. The good thing is here, the guys from Thailand, they can just have a good old swing at these balls, can't they? Because, you know, they weren't playing a few days ago. And, of course, when you're out there, you don't want to be missing loads of balls, but you can treat it as a little bit of fun.
bit more luck than judgment, I think, there, Carl. I think he was trying to snick that one in. Just got a bit too thin, a cushion first, but I think he'll be happy with the result. Yeah, the other thing is, because it's a race to seven, even if these boys were playing a, you know, a, let's say Team Germany, it can be a little bit scary because of the short race. You'd like to be playing Thailand race to nine, because these little silly things, what can happen on a pool table, you just need a little bit more distance sometimes. He's gone for the pot and he's scratched, so Fast a little bit of inexperience there. I think you've got to keep it tight. Don't just give Tyler on these racks. Start the club, please. By the way, we're hearing that Kyle Akalu actually has a, a nerve issue, a, a condition, so it's not necessarily the, the pressure that's causing this. It's more a, a medical problem. Did he get there? I'm not so sure he has done. Get the jump cue out, knock on. Come on, fire it in. Is that? Do you think that's his snooker cue he's using? Not like another snooker cue. Do you think that's his actual snooker cue? It does look like a snooker cue, doesn't it? Sometimes uh, when we went to play eight ball in China, John Paris made a few cues like slightly thicker. Felt like a snooker cue, but thicker for the bigger ball. So whether he's done that or not, I'm not sure, but it does look very much like a snooker cue. Yeah, the riding look at the moment. Well, this guy at the table, is, he's got to be the one who sort of leads the team and he misses that. That was a bad Basketball. shot. It really was. You've got to hit the four ball from Ball in hand. Start the now, this is where you would fully expect the ties to, to clear up. Not a matter of thinking about what shot to play, just execution of pots, which shouldn't be an issue. Making it easy. I can't imagine there's been many frames that people don't win with ball in hand twice. You can see with the first two shots there how, how much this table is responsive and the fact that they don't know the physics of the cue ball. And it's another mistake. I'm getting a lot of pleasure out of this Joe, I won't lie. I told you he'd turn. Didn't take long. <laughs> well, you would think the one advantage snooker players have got is potting, but Tepchai is not really taking advantages out of the moment. He's looking very uneasy out there. Oh, that's a nice shot, it really is. Didn't look that much better, could he? It's a fire in with pace, and that was going to settle down Team South Africa. And the fact that, obviously, they've seen Thailand miss a few balls, because even as pool players, you just expect snooker players to put everything on a pool table, but it is the physics and things like that that are going to cause problems. So it's 2 0. Yeah, the sixth ball from Kyle Akalu. The pot and position attached, for me, was the best shot of the match so far. Akalu and Theron of South Africa lead Thailand, who are yet to get going, yet to get used to these strange conditions as snooker players. South Africa, 2-0 up. Yeah. That was a cracker, the sixth ball no, no, from Akalu. It's about to boost his confidence, and from there it was a formality. Not on Sankarm, twice a, a world ranking event semi finalist in snooker. As for Tepchaya and Nu on the right hand side, well, he is a world ranking event winner. He won the, the shootout in 2019 that's the snooker event that does have a shot clock and it's a brutal one as well they are 10 minute frames 
the first five minutes, it's a 15-second shot clock. The last five minutes, it's a 10-second shot clock. So for him, 30 seconds should be no problem whatsoever. Season after season, his average shot time is well below 20 seconds. And I was doing a little bit of research this morning. One season, his average shot time, Joe, unbelievably, was below 17 seconds. There is work. Yep, it's South some Africa talent break, when it's all going Africa. well, but different ball game today. He's not having it quite so easy, is he? It's not coming quite so natural for him. Yeah, you could see Jason's breaking from that side where we've seen pretty much all the top players break from. It just seems to be breaking easier from over there. Why is that, Carl? Why would it break easier from one side to another? I think what they do is before every tournament just behind the nine they slightly tap the ball so the nine's touching the balls because if there's a gap there it can often just squirt towards one of the corners and you get a lot of quick racks that way so just maybe it's slightly only slightly offset and these are the chances that they've just got to take obviously they've got to keep tired sat in the chair he's lost the cue ball there though hasn't he, he didn't want to be all the way over near that corner he's actually landed okay Get though as long as you've got angles you can always do something he's gonna come towards Flirting with the side pocket. I think it's evident to see that Akalu's going to be the weaker player for the two out of South Africa. It's a good pot, but I don't know if he's just landed a little funny on this six. He's down pretty quick. If the eight passes the nine, of course, well, he's not too bad there, is he? Sorry. Yeah, that's a much better shot. It was all about speed. His coach, Cuban, moodily will be watching this. All of the fellows at the Ricochet Sports Bar in Chatsworth, they'll be keenly keeping an eye on their man, Kyle Akalu, national champion in pool in South Africa. Enough. We've got about two minutes break.
Welcome back to the Brentwood Centre and to day three of the 2022 World Cup of Pool, where South Africa, Kyle Akalu Africa and break. Jason Theron have taken a 3 0 lead over Thailand. Nopon Sankarm and Tepchaya Unnu. It's actually broke out okay from that side, hasn't it? So, decent hit there from Kyle. I wonder, you know, because he's got this medical condition where he shakes, do you think when he pulls the cue back, that's all gone, if that makes sense? Do you know what I mean? I wonder if it's when he's aiming, he can't help but shake because of his medical condition, but when he pulls it back and cues through the ball, do you think that stops? I can't be 100% sure, but... I think the fact that it's a medical condition makes it that bit easier for him because he's used to it all the time. So even when he's practicing, he's used to shaking. So he's obviously found a way to control it and, and sort of work with it. Yeah, I'm going to ask him after this match. I know Kyle pretty well. He's a nice guy. Not sure what Jason was trying there. Surely he wasn't trying the cock tap, was he? Maybe he was. And if he was, it was a good effort. I don't believe the one passes the purple five. And that's going to work out nicely indeed. Yeah, what we've yeah, seen. I get so the impression from the two players from the land of smiles, Joe, is that yes, it was all fun early on, but now pride kicks in. Absolutely, yeah, they want to do themselves justice, weren't they? You know, they, like you say, they've come here with a bit of a free roll, late entry, but once you get out there, you, you sort of, your winning mentality kicks in and they'll want to play well. Also, they want to, don't want to be embarrassed and lose 7-0. Extension code. This is always a nice shot, kick and stick. If you can just keep the cue ball exactly where the one is. He's got a great chance of a hook. That brown seven might play a part in this shot as well. Could maybe fluke that. Good things can happen. The worst thing that can happen here is if it's too much of the one ball on the right hand side because the cue ball will sneak out. Now can the boys from Thailand, can Tep Chaya finally pot a ball? Well, you called this, didn't you, during the ad break there? You said Tep Chaya's pulled the snooker cue out, and you can see it there from the overhead. He's put the pull cue down, and he's got the snooker cue out. Yeah, absolutely. He played a few shots early on, didn't he? And he just didn't get that cue ball where he wanted it. Obviously, wasn't getting the reaction he's used to. So, OK, snooker cues are not ideal on a nine-ball table, but at least he's... at really at home with the feel and how it strikes the cue ball so maybe see a bit better from the Thai boys now yeah potting wise I think you're going to see definitely an improvement from Tep Chara and Nu when Judd Trump of course played in the US Open Carl he used one of your cues didn't he oh dear me Tep Chara you've let me down badly Right, I think we need to get a three cushion carom cue out there, see if that's any good for Tep Chaya. Well, that is just unforgivable, isn't it? That's unforgivable on a snooker table. It's unforgivable on any table. That was just careless, lack of concentration, I think, more than anything else. Now, tell the truth, Carl. You are loving this, aren't you? I am, but I've got to stay a little bit calm because I know what this game can do. I'm begging for 7-0 South Africa, and then me and Joe will be sat in that studio. We're going to have a good chat. <laughs> it won't be that good. Cue ball on the rail is never ideal, but you always expect the players to part these balls. Shot back there. And he does. Scores all right. Well. Thailand have had the chances. <coughs> yeah, this scoreline is not about a lack of knowledge and the fact that the South Africans are outthinking the ties in any way. 
As you say, Carl, balls are being missed. You would never imagine. Yeah. Joe, you must be surprised. Yeah, especially that one. You know, a couple of the other positional shots, it's understandable, I think. The way the balls react is totally alien to a snooker player. But, but like you can see there, the disappointment in his face. That's just, that's just bad concentration. You know, even if you've never played nine ball before, you, you should be able to pot a ball like that. Yeah, you would think any top snooker player off the off the snooker circuit, even off the English eight ball circuit, you know, some of the top players in there, they're going to pop the balls. It's just the other things where things could get a little bit dicey. And I think South Africa, where they might not be one of the top teams in this event. But if they're going to win this match, they're going to get a big match up against Great Britain B. Melin and Majid look very good in the opening match. Spain, one of the hot favourites. They're going to play Albania in round two. Yeah, you can just see the wing balls flying in from that side of the table at ease. And because he's controlling the cue ball so quick in the centre, probably 80% of the time you get a pretty generous split. Well, I'm no full player, but to me, this looks about as good a table as you can ever hope to have after a break off. Yeah, right on cue. He under it's the positional shot, doesn't he? So he can still spin this in. Now, correct me if I'm wrong in snooker. You do play a Scotch doubles event. Is that still around? Was it, it was the World Cup, right? Yeah, a few years ago they had it was two players. They played singles against each other and a Scotch doubles. Yeah, it's 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 quite an enjoyable way of playing doubles. I think it's uh, different dimensions, isn't it? Different dynamics. It also, if you have got one really strong player, it sort of takes that advantage away a little bit. Yeah. Historically, in snooker, though, when doubles events have been played, it's more alternate visit than Scotch doubles. That's what I was worried about. Even though South Africa are winning this match, you just feel like if Thailand could have took a few of them chances, they'd, they'd have really had a good chance of winning this yeah, match. Yeah. No disrespect to South Africa, they're not one of the favourite teams in this event. It's another mistake. Well, surely they've got to make the most of this chance. I think Nopon's definitely looking the stronger of the two players in the Thailand team. That is a definite. Normally in this position, you'd be saying, well, get the rack on the board and get the, the break. But of course, for snooker players, that's not a great advantage. But at least they're off the mark, the ties. Finally, the balls go in and the smiles return. Lapon Sankarm and Ted Chaya Anu trail the South Africans now 4-1. It's a day out for them, but for the vast majority of teams here, it is deadly serious. And this is why, apart from the national prestige, look at the prize money. Total prize fund, 250,000 US dollars, a quarter of a mil. And the champions on Sunday will share 60,000 US dollars. By the way, Thailand were runners up in 2011. Nitiwat Kanjanazri and Kopkit Palagin 
were runners up to Ralph Suke and Torsten Homan of Germany. They lost 10 4 in the final of this event in Quezon City in the Philippines. And on the way to the final, the tyres on that occasion defeated the Netherlands, Estonia, Poland, and Chinese Taipei. Round six. Down on the break, trailing four racks to one. Two dry breaks from the tyre boys. It's really fascinating to see, though, the difference when they hit the balls to the ball players. The balls just don't move the same speed. They just There's a lot of skill in that break-off and how much power you can generate, the cue speed and everything. It's a, it's a real like art in itself. Yeah, and the fact that the cue ball, you could see whizzing side to side, meant you didn't hit the one ball as square as he would have liked. But this is where the pool players should have a major, major advantage. If South Africa just stay patient in this match and maybe don't push the boat out in a lot of shots and just play simple safeties, they're going to get chances. It's definitely theirs to lose. Yeah, this is going to be... I would imagine difficult to hit for Nopon because the cushions will react very differently to a snooker table. If he hits this, he's done Extension very gold. well. It was a good effort, Pass wasn't off. it? It was going two rails, it was never going to be easy. Ball in hand. Yeah. Start the clock, please. Jason straight away looking at this eight ball because that looks like the ball that is causing a few issues. Can maybe play a billiard off the edge of it and just pop the nine. Huh? The way to again. How you looking ahead? Hmm? No, for the cameras, I carry them as on. Extension. Extension code. You could hear both players are mic'd up. Go for three, four. All four players, rather. Okay, and you could hear him say the Karen. I think the camera's on from that side, if you look from there. Hmm? I'm saying from more on this angle, you can play the camera. Anything you can get the Okay. Yeah. Kyle wants to try and break <laughs> these balls out. Jason wants to play the Karen. So this is the thing with Scotch sure. doubles play. I'm kind of on the fence if the carom's on just play it why I try and break the balls so, out uh, leave it straight and then we can actually try and open up the kind of it's going to go forward did it yeah slightly Open it now. I wouldn't be opening these balls up. Uh, from this angle, eh? From that side? Yeah. Try and aim for this cushion there. You're always going to risk it if you're going to try and get the cue ball moving. Jason liked the carom. So if it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong now. Well, he opened them up. <laughs> yeah, that happens in snooker as well. When you're playing a precision positional shot, you tend to take your eye off the pot, and I think that's what happened there. Like you said, though, there's, there's opportunities for both teams in this match. Neither one is dominating. Both players making mistakes. So I think there's still something left in this for Thailand. There are pros and cons when it comes to using a snooker cue in pool, of course. But ultimately, you've got to knock them in. Now, that's simplistic, but it's true. And I think if you're better served using a snooker cue to pot, 
that's something you have to do. OK, there might be negatives in other aspects of the game, but you've got to feel comfortable potting. Well, you can just see knock-on scenes a little bit more in tune with certain shots and he's done well to get the cue ball there. And it looks like it's going to be another rack. So South Africa, we've said this, you can't be throwing racks away. The word whitewash was being banded around at 4-0 to the South Africa. Last night, Estonia and Serbia was low quality, but compelling nevertheless. There are parallels here. Lots of mistakes being made, but really interesting to see who will prevail. And interesting to see whether Thailand will eventually, at some point, get this break sorted out. No indication is they're going to do that yet. No, it's a, it's a real, like problem for them isn't it i'm surprised like carl pointed out maybe they're just not taking enough notice they haven't switched sides of the table and give that a go because they're obviously not getting no joy from that side yeah so it's another rack where thailand hooked off a safety shot from akalu but 
You have to feel like South Africa should be 6 here up and this one would have been for the match. Needs to hit a rail though. This isn't like snooker. After contact, you Fast must shot. catch rail. Going hand. Tepchaya didn't know he was looking to see if he'd got the hook. But clock, it was a foul. Yeah, I wonder if he knew that. Because in our, our sort of game, the shootout game we play, you only have to hit a cushion at any stage, not just after you've made contact with the ball. So I'm not sure if he knew that rule, but costly. Dang. And it's costing a quick fire. That is a question for you, Jake. And I don't mean this like in the sense of I've thought about it, but obviously in snooker, you don't have to a rail after contact. Do you think that would be a decent rule in snooker or just like horrific? I'm not saying I've thought about it, it's just because it's happened there. I actually think it would speed the game up. I'm not I'm not totally adverse to that rule. Snooker, I don't think it needs many rule changes, but if you are going to bring one in for the sake of bringing one in, I think that would be a good one. It stops the uh, the negative roll up behind the ball colour and things like that. And I think it would encourage more aggressive style play, which is the way all sports are going at the moment. Yeah, and actually now I've thought about it. Maybe when you're on the, the stack of reds, obviously you won't just be touching and then look at each other and start another frame, would you? No, it takes out the, that sort of element of it. The, the Probably re-racks will probably be a thing of the past if you had to hit a cushion after every shot. It's, a, it's definitely a talking point. I think that would be a more beneficial rule than a shot clock, personally. No need for a shot clock. There is slow play in snooker, but it's very rarely seen in the TV stages of events. It's more likely confined to the qualifiers, so that's a redundant point for me. <laughs> Phil, you're South a Africa's dinosaur break. or a snooker. What, what do you think rest. about it, uh, a cushion after contact in snooker? I'd change nothing. Uh, you're setting your ways, you. That's your problem. Guilty. Well, the myth of that table, side of the table not working properly is put to bed here by South Africa because he's having no trouble whatsoever from that side. I think he's got one every single time. Yeah, it must just be they're hitting the balls that little bit harder, that's all. Key shot is going to be the purple five to that green six. If they can navigate that, it should be good in this rack. Hold on a minute, you just called me a dinosaur there. I've just realised what you did to me. Brutal, honestly, Joe. On a day-by-day -day basis, this man is brutal. Just rolled the cue ball through. That's because Jason wants this natural angle to spin it round three rails anywhere on that left side of the table. Oh, Jason. Pass up. It's another wrap that's Ball going to be hand. thrown away. This match should be over by now. Start the clock, please. You're obviously getting more confidence in the tie team because you think it's all over. I'm not so sure. I've seen a few little unforced errors so far. But like you say, it should be a formality, but... Getting on the black's not going to be absolutely straightforward. Well, we've not even got to the black, Joe. He's not got on the seven, has he? So it's another mistake. The tap chai up. And that's one of the mistakes that snooker players do make. They try and be too precise with positional shots. Because you need to be on a snooker table. Yeah, they're going to be delighted with the outcome of that. Kept them alive in this rack. Extension. Extension code. Have to go to the cushion. Where are you going to go this way? You're just going to try and find whichever way you feel like you're going to hit this more times than the other because obviously if you miss, you've lost the rack. So just make sure you contact the ball. Even going one rail off the top rail is not the end of the world. You would feel that's going to be a little bit easier to judge than going off two.
It's the bottom side of the seventh thin. Maybe pop the nine. He's a cue ball to keep rolling to get away with this one. Career high, 15th in the world rankings for Ted Chaya and New. The last couple of seasons haven't been the best for him. In fact, Sancom is the high ranked of the two on the World Snooker Tour money list. But they're both prone to errors here. That was another wholesale misjudgment, Joe. Yeah, they're, they're making mistakes in the part of the game you'd expect them to be good at, which is the worrying point from their point of view. You know, you expect the potting and the positional play to be the easy bit for them, but they're, they're really making hard work of it. Well, that was what we call in snooker and treble. It was a fluked bank. They intended to knock in the nine to the opposite centre pocket, and it went across the table. But all donations gratefully accepted at the moment for Thailand. And now that deficit is reduced again. I'm not writing them off just yet. Listen, this game's got a funny way of coming back to bite you. You know, South Africa, they should be, you know, they should be sat in the rooms now, chilling out, because they've had chances to win 7-0. And, you know, let's not talk about fluke balls being the issue in this match because it isn't they've had the chances this match is still alive we've talked a lot about snooker obviously because of not on and Teb Chai being involved South Africa have got a, a snooker heritage they've had a, a world ranking event winner many years ago in 1985 Silvino Francisco defeated Kirk Stevens from Canada in the final of the British Open. Back nine. Now let's Dan see if they can get a bit more three, power in the break and more fuller hit on that one ball. He to hit it a little bit more head on. There you go, it was a lot better. Two balls doesn't squeeze past the six. He's going to have to hit this shot with a bit of power and all if he's going to try and get over towards the two balls. Yeah, so there's a big difference with the snooker players and the pool players like yourself. You think you could roll that blue down the cushion into there? If it doesn't pot, I don't think the snooker players would play on it if it doesn't pot clean. Well, it definitely pots now. Wow, just look at that. That is unbelievable. Stick that on the highlight reel. Maybe unnecessary, but brilliant nevertheless. Oh, not on. Yeah, I mean, Teptai didn't get him on it great, but he's been the stronger of the two. And it's a, an unexpected miss. Yeah, just draw the cue ball back to there. Kyle's not the tallest of fellas. Maybe we can reach this with the extension on the cue. It's been quite an intriguing match, really, hasn't it? Because it's been all South Africa, but somehow there's been a bit of a match going on. Yeah, the score's 5-3, but, you know, it could be any possible score, couldn't it, this match? Could be the other way round. It could already be over. I think whoever, whichever team loses it, is going to be very disappointed because they've had enough chances to win it. Just look at this. What a poor shot that is. Okay, Jason's going this way. He's got to be careful. He can stick this six ball up going that way. Can stick this six ball up going that way. Has he left the potting angle? Oh, Tep Chai doesn't refuse many on a snooker table, so I wonder if he'll refuse this one. No, he didn't. 
Where's the cue ball and where's the six? Oh. Scratch. Did the six Longer. go in the pocket? It was going towards that corner. It's been a long shot. No, it's Down hanging, so base. almost certainly the South Africans are going to extend their lead and move on to the hill. Almost certainly. I do put the word almost in there as a disclaimer, though. Well, I'm, I'm amazed what I've just seen there. I don't know why he's playing for the side pocket there. I really don't. Just play off that right-hand side rail anywhere there, and you can't miss it in that corner. It's a massive pocket. Yeah, whenever I've watched 9 by one TV, the very best players, they always seem to try and avoid the middles if possible. Yeah, I mean, on this TV table, the ball's going to slide in a good few inches up the rail, so just always play easy. For the second time, he was going to miss the nine ball there, but he just about scrambles in using a maximum amount of draw. So it's Here at the World Cup of Pool, I'm afraid two snooker players are really struggling. Kyle Akalu and Jason Theron from South Africa lead Thailand. 
six three that means they're on the hill breaking off in rack 10 to try and complete victory not an impressive victory but a win nevertheless rack 10 south africa to break on the hill leading six three Another example we've seen there, don't we? The wing ball just seems to be flying in from that side of the table. Can Kyle get to the pot in angle of the one ball? Push out. Push out, gold. Now, this is what you see with pool players up against snooker players. When they play a push-out, they push to a jump because snooker players aren't used to playing with a jump shot. It's Mate. not legal yeah. in that game. Yeah. Back to South Africa. So the ties pass it back to no one's surprise. No, I don't think he's going for the pot here. I think he's just going to try and stick the cue ball there and get the one ball down towards the bottom. He didn't hit it as full as he'd liked. He's going to need some help off this two. And I think he's got it. Nice little shot here, though. He can get the hook back if he hits it on the right side, and he hasn't. So this is a chance to win the match now. All the balls are sat there. They all go in the pockets. This is all about cue ball control. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Check the angle, so straight. Jeez. <laughs> it's not been a, a very high bar, but Jason Theron there has definitely been the best player. Didn't want, does it? in this match. Just pretty hard to see how it can go wrong from here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you feel like if it's gonna go wrong it's from that pink four to the six, even though Still pretty easy, but once they get on that six ball, this match should be yeah. over and done. Well, if it is, let me just thank Joe for joining us in the commentary box. It's great to have him here, the former world semi finalist, Masters runner up, and the reigning Welsh Open champion. Congratulations on that, Joe. Brilliant performance that was. Yeah, cheers, Phil. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's been fun. Shame the uh, snooker players couldn't have done us a bit more proud, but there you go. Yeah, maybe when next time we see Joey, might be out there himself. And I can tell you, folks, the look on Carl Boys' face, he's beyond smug. No, I mean, jokes aside, of course, we always knew Tyler were going to struggle with certain aspects of the game of nine ball. And it's this nine ball for South Africa to face Great Britain B. Yes, Kyle Akalu and Jason Theron have come out of Africa and they're into the last 16. The snooker players from Thailand did not do themselves justice.